Very nearly about sailing, October 2023. Yeah, I know it's November for those of you who are watching this live and I missed it a couple of days. I unfortunately couldn't couldn't complete it due to circumstances entirely outside of my control. Actually, that's a lie. They were slightly in my control, me doing something stupid, but never mind. Anyway, um, if you're new to this channel, I've probably put some a picture of a woodworking thing on the front. This is not a woodworking channel. It's just a, a channel that documents what I'm doing as I'm slowly um, trying to get over a health problem and get my boat back together and get it back in the water. And one of the things I need to do is to do some woodwork inside the boat. So I've been doing a bit of practicing, sorting my workshop out. So this video is going to cover me putting the, uh, the wonderful woodworking vice, which I don't know how I could have done without before, onto my bench that I made a few weeks ago. And also practicing dovetails. One of the things I need to do is get some drawers in. And I haven't done dovetails for about 15 or so years. So I thought, well, I need to start making a few dovetails, because the more you do, obviously, the better you get at it. But after four, I got incredibly bored got to be honest um, and I wanted to make a thing and I needed a tray so I made this sort of tray thing for the workshop and, but I, I got a little bit over ambitious and I decided I wanted to um, if you can see this I wanted to kind of mitre the corners whilst also having the dovetail and then recessing the thing for the for the for the base in it and um, Anyway, it went better than I expected, but it's not fantastic. It's certainly not good enough to make, a, a say, a drawer or something for inside the boat. But, and I'm not going to show you how to do this. Plenty of woodworking chat things out there. I'm just going to show what I did, basically. So I shall edit this so that it's all fairly sort of crunched down and not too much detail, but we're getting there. Right, so I've managed to pick up <coughs> an amazing price, I think, £20, including postage and everything an old record 52e woodworker's vice. I think the E means extended so it's slightly longer than the, than the standard one and the 52 is means it's uh, seven inches. I'm going to extend it by one on either side. That's plenty big enough. Now obviously it needs a lot of work but all the bits are there as far as I can see, it's just taking it apart, cleaning up the rust. I think this is what we used to use at school, actually, saying pretty. It's the quick release one as well, which is what I really, really want. Quick release seems to be working absolutely fine. It just seems a really thorough clean. Well, one of the advantages, and as I say, I'm not going to um, show how I refurbish this because it'll be quite honest. I just took it to pieces, cleaned it up, um, put it back together with, with, with just one slight thing I had to do. One of the advantages is that with only this bit here um, it's a lot less heavy than having to have all of the stuff to actually line it up and so on so I fitted it there I put some a couple of screws there um, a couple of coach bolts underneath is exactly the height that I wanted it to be um, I've made a wooden thing I routed out that. let's also get screwed on that will actually take it higher than the bench but it will if I can move this forward Right, so here we go. It is fitted. And as you can see, obviously I haven't painted it. I've put cork, this sort of that rubberized cork on both these faces. Don't know if I really need to do that. People seem to do it. This is a quick release vice. So if I pull this lead and you can pull it in and out, get it to roughly where you want to clamp up. And then tighten it up and do what you need to there. Um, I think I said before, I think it's exactly the same as we used to have at school. So, um, and it's, it's quite wide. You can get, I should measure that, shouldn't I? Yeah, it's about seven and seven and a quarter inches, which is about 18, nearly 18 and a half centimetres. That's not bad. So you can clamp things up in all sorts of configurations. 20 quid find off eBay, not bad at all, very happy with that. Um, and I've kind of made it, it's just a little bit higher than flush, this is my woodworking surface, it's just a piece of 5mm ply, 5mm, 12mm ply. Um, we shall see, I think it's going to be useful, not really had that, because it's like your third hand isn't it? 
very often you try and do stuff and it's really difficult. Right, so I've been busy seeing if I can make dovetails and while I've been doing this I've noticed that um, the, the workbench that I've made, ideally it would have been a bit bigger and I could have had one of those wells in it that people use to either dump the, the wood shavings or and all the tools as they're messing up. And that's what I remember from school is we used to have a sort of a big workbench, one pupil on either side and then a big well bit in the middle and he used to kind of um, push stuff into the middle and you could sweep your dust in. So I'm going to make a tray and I've got some wood. So I'm going to make a tray and I've got some wood and I'm using this stuff, just some old offcuts. That was, I think it was pound fifty per piece um, that I can kind of put on the side and it can slot underneath and I can kind of keep this stuff a little bit more tidy and it'll also be good practice in making dovetails. So I've been having a look to see if I can, because I want to do dovetails when I make the, um, when I do the galley. So I've just been trying a few different ones. This is my first attempt and I've put me, that means I, me. This is just the way I remember doing it at school um, with a coping saw um, and just marking out and pencil lines and things. And it's, it's, it's all right, you know, you'd look at that and, th and I've put some, uh, some oil on it just to bring out the grain so you can see it a little better. It's not great, but it's good enough. Then I tried a few different things. I tried, I used the Paul Sellers method because his is fairly close to what I did, but a lot more chisel work. A um, lot better. Being slow, being accurate really helps and using the knife for the knife walls. That's not bad. You know, this is the first time I've done a dovetail. That's the first one in about 40, 45 years. And I didn't bother to sort of look to see how to do it. That's um, following the Paul Sellers method. I then tried Matt Esley, is it? I'll put links below. He does a couple of different ways of, of doing it. He uses the coping saw rather than chisel. And again, that, that's actually quite good. I think the secret of this is it almost doesn't matter which way you do it, as long as you're reasonably accurate. And then I just had a go at doing a sort of a hybrid method. Um, and that's the best so far. What you won't notice from some of these other ones is they're really not very square. Look at that, and that is important. Whereas doing it carefully, um, that's kind of come up quite nice. So I've used a combination of things. I'll use it to make that drawer. The other thing I've done is I've bought one of these type of markers which I'll, I'll actually I'll show very quickly but I won't do a tutorial on it. I'll show very quickly me making the, the draw thing um, because I think sometimes I prefer using that type of marker sometimes I prefer using a really large, sharp knife and sometimes maybe I quite like the idea of this the one that I don't like and I don't even know where it is because it turned out to be a complete disaster is the one with the little pin that sticks out. I've hidden it. <coughs> this. This is great for sort of marking, but if you actually pull it along the wood, it just rips all the grain out. Anyway, so that's pretty much what... Oh, and the vice is fantastic. I've been using the vice for this stuff. don't know how I did, did anything without it now. It's, it's, it's paid for itself already. It's absolutely brilliant having it in here, and it's absolutely perfect. And as I say, very cheap. And also, I've made myself a shooting board. I've shown myself using that. And that's really simple. You can go onto YouTube channel and say, plans available. See what's plans available? It's, um, how many pieces of wood is it? One, two, three, it's four pieces of wood. As long as you get all this at 90 degrees, and I've just screwed it together and it just fits on here. Um, if you need plans to make something like that, you shouldn't be making something like that, is what I would say. There is no mystery to this woodworking stuff. It's all about diligence, accuracy, and enjoying what you're doing. This is what I'm discovering and I'm starting to enjoy it. Uh, there's a lot more woodworking to come. This wasn't supposed to be a woodworking channel, but hey ho. Right, so I've sort I've squared them up pretty good actually, um, and they're all the same length. What I've decided is a bit too tall. I want it to be about <coughs> three inches, which is about seven centimeters so I'm going to cut, cut that down on the, um, on the table saw.
Yeah, hardly looks any different, but um, that's just cutting nearly an inch off. Now I have to figure out something I can make with those. All right, got to be honest, I don't think I explained particularly well what I was trying to do here, uh, not even to myself. So what I wanted, um, if you can see that, is a mitre there so I can cut a groove around on the inside and you won't actually see the groove. And by a groove, I think I mean a, a rabbit or a rebate and so on. And then, but also on the top, similarly, I want a mitre um, so that I can do a sort of round over and it'll meet nicely. But then I want dovetails at the end. So it hasn't worked out quite the way I had it in my head because obviously because of doing the, the mitred bit, there isn't a curve here. So that, that all looks all right so far, doesn't it? That's not too bad. But that, <laughs> that didn't come out well at all. I either marked them up wrong or I measured them wrong or something went dreadful there. Let me pull this apart. I mean, it's nice and tight and it'll, it'll do. Oops, got to pull it apart the right way. That's the whole point of the dovetails, isn't it? So what you can see on the dovetaily bit, I've kind of cut these 45 degree bits in there. I'm sure there's a better way of doing this and I'm sure there's a way that I could do this and still get the dovetail working, but that's beyond me. Maybe I'll try that at a future date. And then obviously on this side, you just kind of do the opposite where the end pins are literally just mitered. So it's not that. As I say, there must be a way of actually doing the dovetail bit, but this will do. What I'm going to try and do is to do this as accurately as possible. And I'm going to cut from the end and score a score a mark along here. Quite a firm mark. And I'm going to do a really sharp knife wall from this mark here. To wherever it lands up. I think I was doing it from the corner before. So I've got the knife mark there and just do a tiny little nick up to that wall. And then get rid of that. So I've got a nice straight line on that edge, which means that when I saw it I'm already dead on the line. It's ever so. I did sharpen it actually, and that has made a huge difference. So I'm not, I'm not pressing it at all. And once you start, it goes where it wants to go. And I think I just. This is a gentleman's saw. I'm obviously no gentleman. I'm obviously too sloppy for doing this type of stuff. Um, these ones on the ends. This is, this is interesting, because I've got to cut this at 45 degrees and these go straight down. So again, I can line up to make sure they're straight on it. I'm going to bash my arm against the tripod now. <laughs> Not making this easy for myself, am I? Hey ho. And this should very soon just ping out. There we go. I'm hoping that that's more accurate than what I did before. <laughs> I kind of like the coping saw because I, I, I'm pretty sure this is the way I learned today at school. And you don't have to go down the actual curve. I figure you see a lot of people they go down the curve, but the, that's actually a little bit wider than the cut. So I'm, I'm going down just a little bit off it. above that corner because that will be chiseled out. And then 
cut that bit. so that I can see it. I think so. Can I find my hammer? Will I stop asking questions? Actually, funnily enough, that's a better view from looking sort of down and slightly behind it off of this. This is where, like the frog, you're always tempted to jump too soon before you get to the end. Or I am anyway. I would have made a terrible frog. I don't know. Maybe I'd have made a very good frog. Sorry, I've missed that because I had a, had a visitor. So I've cut that, those with the knife. I had a visitor because I've actually, I've, I've been given a commission. These two shelves that I didn't make, somebody else, um, want them cut down a quarter of an inch on either side. Sorry, on, on only one side. So I've got to cut those a quarter of an inch. So people are trusting me, whereas they shouldn't really, should they? I should do that later. Right, I've sawn that. I've cut the bobbly bits off. Um, but I haven't sort of smiled out. This is the first fitting I am feeling. Well, I don't know if I'm optimistic, pessimistic, or what. Um, but I don't think I could have done that any more accurately. Well, it's certainly not. It's certainly tight. Oh, that's that's going to be too tight, isn't it? I don't know. I don't want to just bash this in too hard, but... Says he bashing it in too hard. <clears throat> I'm not going to say the next bit's easy, it should be easy. What I've done is I'm making sure that I've got the pencil line that I drew in right at the beginning. That's in the right place. I've got a straight edge along there. I put the width here so I'm going to draw that's flush with um, I've got some more of this that I'm going to use for the for the base um, which pretty much fits in it's pretty snug <laughs> um, and then I've set the route a bit for about half the depth of this so it's simply a case of running the route along and I've managed to get two of these clamps I'm really going to need to move the clamps as I'm kind of doing it so, but I think that's all fairly straightforward if I can find my PPE there we go. Right, so hopefully you can see, if I put my finger in there, there's a rebate, rabbit, groove, call it what you will, all the way around there. Um, actually, the bottom of this box is going to be neater than the top. So I'm going to cut a piece of ply suit that and then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to round off these edges and again I'm going to take it apart and just turn on the root. I won't show you that bit because that's easy peasy lemon easy. So I've, I've bashed this together to make sure it's reasonably firm. I did diagonal check, made sure the two diagonals were the same uh, and then I cut a piece of wood to fit. I know these, these angles are at 90 degrees so Basically, when I clamp it up and so on, I'm going to glue it, and then I'm... Oh, that's not, that's not bad, that's all right. 
Uh, it's not brilliant. It's not brilliant, but it's okay. It's all right, I'm videoing and there's a witness coming in to have a look at this, so I'll just switch you off for a second. <laughs> Nothing but interruptions today. <laughs> right, I've completely run out of time today and it's 31st, so this is going to be a day late, but to be quite honest, if you've suffered this far in this video, yeah, it's not going to bother you that this comes out a day later. I really messed up putting the brad nails in. I didn't realise this is, well, I realise this is not a good brad nailer. I didn't realise quite how random it is where it seems to actually poke the nails out. It's something I need to practice with a little bit. But um, take the clamps off tomorrow, give it a little bit of a spruce up, put some Danish oil on it, and that's that. It'll work. It's not great, but it will work. So there we have it. Now when I wave this about it probably looks quite good but when you look at the details, look there's a big gap, that's the first one that corner that I did, that's the second one. They did slowly get better and better as I did the other corners. Um, things that would have helped, I mean a lot of pra more practice because if you think about it I've only done, I did four dovetails then four of these so that's only eight, I probably need to do about 50 before I can get the accuracy. I really need to get the router table sorted out, I don't know if you can see it but where I routed the edges, for example, it sort of cut in a little bit. This I did it before I had these put together. So the router table, having a router table will be, will be great. In principle, it works actually quite nicely and this will be very useful. And one of the nice things is, about this woodworky stuff, is you can make stuff for your, for your workshop, which doesn't have to be fantastic, because there's loads of things that you can do to help out. And things that I'm going to be doing next, and I won't do them in detail on the videos, is um, things like I need a proper mitre cutting. I've got the shooting board, but I need a proper mitre board, uh, bench hook. I need to do stuff for the table saw. Particularly, I need to have a, it, well, God, what's it called, a cross-cut sled, because it really doesn't cut at 90 degrees very well. So there's a few things I need to do. And as I'm making those jigs and things, I'm actually learning woodwork as I'm doing it. So I hope that wasn't too boring. I will put links to um, the Paul Sellers and the Matt Esley um, how to do a dovetail below. And having said that we're late and, and it was actually my fault, we've now not had the internet for, for over a day so I'm not going to be able to put this out for a couple of days. And that is not my fault. That blame storm whatever it is that we've got in because we... anyway. Yeah. Um, okay, that was October. Um, hope you had a good Halloween, and I will see you in November. Probably, a, probably, a, probably a short one. Bit of a, a bit of an update on my health, maybe. I'm on a new regime, a new medication, which I've only been having for a few days, and it seems to be working quite well. But I overdid it and put myself back quite considerably, and that's one of the reasons that I was uh, a bit late. So, serves me right, but as I say, the good news is it seems to be helping a bit, which is going to be, that's going to bode good for next year. So anyway, enough of me waffling on. I need, now need to go and use this. I could have made it a bit bigger, actually. <laughs> I think I might have measured it wrong. Anyway, there we go.